your organization runs training courses for your staff and customers. Only problem is, it's time-consuming, inconvenient, and costly. Take a leaf out of our book. The School of Hard Knock Knocks uses the online training platform by YZ, and our team and customers love it. It's simple to use, supports every media format, audio, video, text, and looks great on desktops, tablets, and mobiles. And for a limited time, quote SHKK when you arrange a demo and get 10% off your first year's plan. YZ helps us deliver comedy courses around the world. Imagine what it could do for your organization. YZ, that's WYZED.com. YZ, online learning made simple. You're listening to the School of Hard Knock Knocks podcast with me, Maury Morgan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your next comedian. <laughs> Shouldn't drink on an empty head, you know that, don't you? <laughs> Everyone in this room is now dumber for having no. listened to it. That's a bucket list. You have dangerously underprepared yourself for the shit that is about to get real. A wig, flares and a fake moustache and Mad Dog Malcolm Cummings was born. The creation of Adelaide comedian and musician Jerry Massey, Mad Dog is part crooner, part playboy with a light spluttering of sleaze. Together, he's a hilarious 1970s character that is uh, all too familiar. In this interview, we talk callbacks, one-liners, getting away with inappropriate behaviour, his band, Lucifer's Lounge, and being a comedian in Adelaide. If you're a lover of character comedy like Elliot Goblet, Bob Down, and Helen Badeau, then you'll love this interview with Jerry Massey. You'll also be excited by the news that Jerry Massey is our guest comedian for the September 9-13 to stand-up comedy course in Adelaide. Get coached in a supportive environment with guest comedian Jerry Massey and resident comedy coach Glenn Nicholas over five evenings at The Archer in North Adelaide. The early bird price is about to end, so don't miss out. Visit www.schoolofhardknockknocks.com to secure your spot today. And now, here's the delightful Jerry Massey. Hello there, hello there. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, hello there. Malcolm Cummings is the name. Mad Dog Malcolm Cummings, cabaret artiste at your service. And don't you look lovely? You do look lovely. You know, I travel around Australia quite a lot, and I've always said that Adelaide has the best-dressed bogans, and it's true. It's absolutely true. Now, we've met before, haven't we? Did you come to my Fringe show? No, you did. I didn't do a Fringe show. Do you really think... Do you have to lie to all these people? No, but we have met before. I'm sure we have. It'll come to me. Never mind, ladies and gentlemen. It's lovely to be here at the, at the Arkabar Entertainment Centre. The last time I performed here, the crowd went wild, yelling and screaming, but I wasn't giving anybody their money back. <laughs> no, it's good to be here. It's good to be in Australia, actually. I've just come back from Afghanistan entertain the fellas over there man that Taliban they were a tough audience <laughs> they were oh, sorry I'm a bit tired today <clears throat> tried to sleep on one of those Ikea fold out beds but I was continually being woken up by the sales staff and <laughs> other customers lovely well let me tell you a little bit about myself how I got into comedy it all started a couple of months ago I was uh, I was living in Melbourne, and I got involved with a bad crowd, the Melbourne Mafia. And I ended up testifying against them in court, and I had to go on the witness protection program. And the federal police suggested I become an Adelaide comedian. It's the best way to go completely unnoticed. <laughs> Absolutely right. Woman came to my door today, she said, would you like to shave your head for leukaemia? I said, I don't want leukaemia. Good afternoon, Jerry. How are you? Hey, Murray. Good. Good morning. How are you? Oh, well, I'm very good. I've, um, as I always do, a little bit of research on the people I interview and uh, I, I just said off, off mic just a moment ago to you that uh, I've just been watching you screaming at your audiences uh, to... One was a punk rock song, and the other one was about um, a biro pen running out of ink. And obviously, you know that gag well. <laughs> and so, when I picked up the phone to say hello to you and got this sort of uh, gentle Sunday afternoon Jerry Massey <laughs> voice, it was 
bit, bit, bit daunted, a bit wor- worrisome. <laughs> well, are you okay? <laughs> But you're, you're two different people. I keep. I have to remind myself, Maury, he's two different people. So thank you very much, Jerry, for ha- taking the time out uh, on this day, Wednesday, midweek in Australia. You're in Adelaide? Yep. Perfect. <laughs> yep. That's the as much energy and excitement as you can mount when you live in Adelaide, I guess. Absolutely, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so does Mad Dog Malcolm, who's the, really the guy I wanted to talk about today, who is also you. Yeah, great. Well... Mad Dog Malcolm. At the beginning of this podcast, we heard a little bit of Mad Dog Malcolm. We heard a little bit about his style. Um, yeah. Now, in my, these are my words. He's he's a bit of a crooner. He's a bit of a ladies' man, perhaps. And judging from his fashion sense, he's a bit of uh, living in the past somewhat. So he says says some things that are perhaps uh, not not acceptable in today's PC world. Would that describe Mad Dog? <laughs> I think the um, the uh, style uh, possibly uh, permits him to uh, say more things, but uh, yeah, I'm not so. I, I do try and um, I, I do try and not make it the sort of humour where I intentionally pick uh, like tropes from the seventies that were that were sexist and just use them and uh, um, uh, even draw attention. I'm not making fun of how sexist the past was. That's, and I see, I see other people doing a similar thing with the 70s costumes and the 70s crooning even um, Vegas style singer. Mm. But I'm mm-hmm. really not, uh, I'm really not trying to do any, any of that. Yeah. So, yep. yeah. And I, but, but I do realize that when I walk on stage and people don't, have, don't know the character, that that's the assumption they're going to make, that I'm going to be doing that sort of thing. Ah, uh, yeah. But I, but I, I, I tend yep. to subvert yep. that. And, Cause I've seen plenty of acts that are like that. Yep. And uh, and uh, and that makes me um, well. I guess every time I see something like that, it makes me go, "Okay, don't do that. Someone's doing yeah. that." <clears throat> well, well, I've, yeah. I've I've seen Mad yeah. Dog, and he's uh, he's hilarious. And uh, yeah, look, I don't think he says anything inappropriate, but perhaps just the the themes that he talks about. Uh, the, and anyway, he just and particularly the one time I've seen you do. Uh, I've seen you do it live with a big glass of wine in your hand, and maybe that maybe that was not Mad Dog Malcolm. Maybe that was Jerry Massey uh, with the wine glass. Uh, it, it was, oh yeah, I yeah, know the now, night you were there. <laughs> You're right. I was drinking that. Night. Well, it was it was perfect. <laughs> I was drinking that. Night. It was yeah, a yeah, great yeah. character. Whether you know when you said glass of wine in your hand, I thought that's not me. I don't drink. And then I thought, oh yeah, I did that night. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <Yeah. laughs> Trying to remember or, or forget a big night, obviously. <laughs> and and you were and I thought and you had trouble sitting down in one spot for for a character holding a glass of large red wine, I found that funny. Just in its, you just couldn't get comfortable on stage. You just there was I don't know there were stools and there were benches and stuff. And anyway, I was testing testing the patience of the audience. You, you did, you did, oh, and it was great. And you finished with the climax song of uh, "You Killed Robin Williams," I believe that night. Oh, yeah, great. Yeah, great. that's 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 one I love doing. Yeah, <laughs> a great song. Uh, <laughs> sad but great. Now let's go back to Mad Dog Malcolm. Who is he? Is he is he your uncle? Is he based on a, a, a an old primary school teacher? Who who is this character? Um, I would say that uh, when I came up, I, I just I was doing a show uh, for the Adelaide Break Festival a long time ago, but not a, not a comedy show. It was a music show. And when we we're doing the sound check, everybody yeah. else that was doing sound checks were all characters. So oh, for right. some reason that year there was. He's a character. That, and on the way home, I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a character tonight. Yep. <laughs> and so I drove to um, uh, where I knew there was a wig shop, and I bought a wig and uh, I had some 70s clothes. So I kind of made it up on the spot. Yeah, right. Just in the spirit of of um, spirit of just being silly or just getting caught up in the yep in the, in that. But what I but then what I based the look on after, I mean, at the time I was clean shaven, so I had to paint on a moustache. But I, if if anybody looks at ugly Dave Gray in the show Blankety Blank, yeah. they'll get they'll see Malcolm. Yes, that's yes. exactly the look that I was going for. Was, but the Blankety Blank thing. Right. And, of course, I grew up when that was still on TV, and that was like the, uh, I don't know what you call it, but it was pretty, it was a really popular thing for men to wear those brown buoyant yeah. clothes. And a lot of innuendo yeah, in that show. Yeah, that's true. There was all that. Yeah, all that, all that, all that human stuff. Yeah, mm. yeah. Yeah, so I guess I, uh, I I took all the visual cues from pretty much from blankly blank. 
Yeah, right. Now, and you said you had the costume stored away from a fancy dress, or you've just just always been interested yeah. in seventies gold. Have you? Well, I have. I have always uh, uh, liked. Set- in the nineties, uh, I was in, uh, playing in bands, and and seventies uh, clothes were particularly unfashionable then. So I would wear them in the in the group, and so were the other guys in the group actually. So I started getting a collection of them all. Or at least getting into the habit of whenever whenever I saw them in a um, second hand shop of just buying them if they fit. Yep. And um, at one stage uh, I was in. Um, I was in, at one stage I stopped doing. It. I thought I've got enough of this because I, I, I didn't have any use for them because I hadn't invented Malcolm yet, and I was, and I just stopped buying them and I was thinking of even getting rid of them. And I was on a holiday in America, and across the road from the. Uh, the hotel I was staying in was a second hand shop and it was open yeah. like all night. Yeah. It was just weird. And one night on the way home, I thought, look, I'm just going to go in there and have a look. And they had a rack of 70s shirts for $10 each. Yeah. And I just ended up buying, you know, buying about 20 or 30 of them. And I thought, oh, well, I can't say no now. I've got to, you know, I just let this go. I couldn't just go home and not buy them all. So I did. You would have been overweight on your, at your Qantas baggage allowance. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, uh, well, well, fantastic. Now, the people that listen to this podcast, they are up and coming comedians. You know, they're they're on the often. Now, I saw you at Cranker Comedy uh, on a Tuesday, and Cranker Comedy for those that haven't been to Adelaide, that is a, a great location to to. It, it is a curated room, but if you go there often enough, you'll get on and has highlight comedians like yourself. Um, so the podcast is for people who are starting out, going to crank a comedy, early days, and we do try and give some feedback and some advice to those people. I particularly like, you do it very well, the callback. Uh, now, in comedy, the callback, of course, is where you mention something at the beginning or halfway through your show, and then the callback's normally the end. Often it can be the, the actual ending joke. Not always, but often it is. And you do a fantastic callback, and I won't, I won't ruin it for anyone who comes to see you, but it does involve, it does involve an audience member oh, yeah, um, at, the, at the beginning, and you do it so well. You make, like, you, it's almost like, oh, he's, because you, when, you, when I saw you, you had that big glass of red wine in your hand, I thought, oh, he's gone, he's off character, he's lost it, he's, <laughs> he's forgotten that he's on stage, he's being Jerry Massey. But then it comes back halfway through and then of course right at the end you've got a little gag and then it breaks halfway through and you uh you pull out that person from the front row and highlight that you, that's where you know her from i think that's great what a, a classic callback where did can you remember where that callback came from how do you, how you created it um i uh i i Let's see. I'm not quite sure. I remember when I was doing a lot of research, I was watching a lot of old uh, musical and vaudeville yep. uh, acts and like, and uh, even uh, some things that magicians do. And there was something, I can't remember who it was, unfortunately, but it was such a long time ago. But there was yeah, yeah. There was some act, and I, it was one of these, well, you know, one of these guys that's long, long gone. But he was saying something and then he just sort of, paused and looked at someone in the audience and it was related to something that happened beforehand. And, uh, I, and I remember thinking, oh, God, that's I love this. I love this guy. There's a classic one that this, this magician, I hope he doesn't, I, I don't know if it's an original one, maybe I shouldn't say it, but I it I'll say it anyway. These audience ones where you just make fun of someone in the audience where he says, uh, uh, this guy said he, he had something like a, a ticket to his show that he was going to give away to somebody and he said, I'd like to give it to I'll give it to a handsome man. You, sir, could you give this to the person behind you? And it was just so funny. <laughs> and and I love those. Uh, I love those those uh, classic gags. I really hope that that yeah. guy didn't write that joke. And I'll just spoil. It. I'll just give it away. But anyway, <laughs> but, yeah. um, it sounds like it sounds like a classic Bill one. Yeah, no, that's and uh, yeah, so that callback one was 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 based on something else that I saw. Yep, and uh, and also you know. Uh, for anyone that sees, you know, just getting very close to the line of being appropriate. <laughs> it is, it, it is. But That's again, like, <laughs> like we said at the beginning, with that outfit and with the character, I think you get away with a lot more because people go, well, it's not Jerry, it's uh, Mad Dog Malcolm. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Um, now, you've kind of told me the answer to my next question, which is um, Mad Dog Malcolm Sings, of course, and um, you've got a toilet song that I've heard and, and yeah. watched. You've got the uh, You Killed Robin Williams, which is a classic one as well. Uh, n- now, I'm assuming that Lucifer's Lounge, that's the band that Jerry Massey, that's you, <laughs> are in. Did that, did that come before Mad Dog Malcolm, or where, where do we go? Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that band has been together since 1997, I think. Oh, yeah. wow, okay. Yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah, and, and you're a popular... Yeah. I, I looked at your website, and you advertised yourself as a, as a wedding singer uh, band or wedding band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's but you're more than that. Or was that a gag as well? No, 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 that's true, that's true. It's, that's, that's what our, our, main, our main gig is, so, yeah, that's really good. Uh, yeah, I like... Uh, Just, um... At these weddings, weddings, does uh, Mad Dog Malcolm accidentally slip out occasionally? Or? I mean, I, see, it's once uh, a woman who had booked us, uh, booked Elizabeth for that, so her wedding came to see a comedy show. I think it might have been a coincidence that I was that I was on that night. I think she was just out of the fringe yeah. going to see lots of things. And at the end of the night, she goes, oh, can you please uh, do Mad Dog at the wedding? Can you please, you know? And I said, are you mm. sure? I said, all right, if, if you really want to. And then about a week before the wedding, she <laughs> rang me up and said, oh, I don't want you to do Mad Dog. Please don't do Mad Dog. Don't come yeah. in. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. She was obviously caught up in the, um, caught up in the wine. Yeah. In the, in the, in the um, yeah, in the high at, at the time. of things. <laughs> but then as the, as the date loomed by, she goes, oh, my God, I can't have Mad Dog at my What wedding. have I done? So, <laughs> so Mad Dog has never crashed a wedding or intentionally crashed a wedding at all? No, no. No, oh, it could be no. could be the right the right thing. Uh, no, not a romantic. <laughs> it'd have to be sort of the second the second wife marriage. I think something where you know, you just, uh, maybe something like that. It could uh, yeah, you know what, something like that. It might work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or maybe your second <laughs> wedding vows or something. Anyway, just a, a shout out to anyone in Adelaide or or beyond. Lucifer's Lounge, a great band, and uh, yeah, combine Mad Dog Malcolm. We'd love to hear <laughs> that combination. Yeah. Um, now, and Mad Dog Malcolm does a lot of one-liners as well. So, in fact, I knew you as the singer, I knew you as the callback, and then it wasn't until I, because I would have had a few drinks that same night as well with you and your red wine, <laughs> and I was watching some some older videos of you performing and recognised a couple of the gags and went, oh, yeah, he did that gag, he did that one. And you do have quite a few quick quips and one-liners in there as well. You've got long, longer gags as well, of course, the, the, the biro pen running out of ink. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's one example. Where do you come up with these one-liners that you have? Yeah, so that was, again, when I was first starting doing lots of research and I came across uh, a guy called Emo Phillips in America. He's, he's still going. Yep. Yeah, yeah. But I think uh, if you were going to research one-liners, you should look at his 1980s stuff. Right. Uh, I mean, he's still really good, but uh, his AD stuff is a real, uh, it's a real um, lesson in how to write one liners. And so I was, uh, I just, um, it's funny because I, because I listen to it so much, his jokes don't make me laugh anymore. But at the no. time, they just floored me and I couldn't believe how, you know, I just thought, oh, these are such perfect little jokes. And so I, um, I started actually, um, taking his uh, structures and putting yep. my own words into, into them and trying that out first. And that, that sort of worked almost immediately. Yeah, it's, uh, from memory, does he have wacky hair? He has wacky hair and he has a really strange voice. But if you, if you, um, uh, if you, if you go past that and analyse the, the, uh, the way that he words his joke, yep. he's absolutely genius. Yeah, so he, he, he started me on the... He, he made me appreciate the one-liner. Uh, yes. Uh, so that's what got me into one-liners. And then soon after that, uh, Jimmy Carr's first DVD came out, and uh, and that was all terrific one-liners. Um, uh, yeah, and he was a. I guess with, with these guys, it was more the the impression that they first make. I guess it kind of wears off after a while. Like. Um, but that first special that Jimmy Carr did was just terrifically full of yeah. fantastic jokes. And then Frankie Boyle would, would start writing great one-liners. Yeah. So I I, I basically took uh, I, I basically just analysed how uh, how those how they were you know what what do you call it a garden path joke where you try and get everybody to think in one way in the first part of the sentence and then 
reveal something in the second half. And then zig instead of zag. Yeah, we we call that normal normal twist at the school of hard knocks. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, so that was uh, so. Um, yeah, so Jimmy Carr. And and Frankie Boyle, two comedians that are well known for being a bit crass. So I can understand where Malcolm gets his uh, inspiration from. Now, not suggesting that Malcolm is crass. He's a very, he's a gentleman. He's a gentleman. That there is a there is an edge to him that uh, is certainly not. Um, I'm sure it's certainly not the Jerry Massey that performs at Lucifer's Lounge as the front man for that band. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. I, I forget that uh, some of that stuff is crass actually, because it's um, it, it's it's uh, it's not crass to me. But you're right. Now that you mention it, if I actually look at look back at it, it's like, oh yeah, I guess that is yeah. crass. <laughs> But it doesn't. Yeah, you might. I mean, look, I'm I'm Melbourne based. I might be just overly sensitive. You know what we're like on the east coast. Um, <laughs> yeah, we just just. Two PC, absolute two PC. Well, we we are only halfway through the year. It is uh, what is it, beginning of August, and but what starts yeah. to happen is we start planning ahead, don't we, for comedy events? Um, of course, Adelaide Fringe is huge. Uh, the March Madness, which is that right? It's in March. Well, I get the... Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Um, and I was there. That's right. I, I always get confused because I was there twice this year uh, in March and then back in June in Adelaide. Have you got plans for a show next year, 2019, in Adelaide? Uh, no, I, I, not, not this time around. I'm thinking of trying to uh, uh, get out of Adelaide. and um, or, or, No, we'll get, take the act out of Adelaide. Yeah, okay. Uh, That's... So kind of... Um, yeah, I, I'm kind of... Um, I mean, I, 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 I like Adelaide, obviously. It's, it, yeah, I probably... I can I can do what I want. I can do what I want for a living here and 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 stay here and stuff. And that's 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 the you know that's a great thing about this city. But I I um, am starting to um, I'm starting to want to perform in front of you know people that have never seen me before. And, yeah. and here I mean even I mean here it's sort of there's always well, afterwards someone will always come up and say hey I saw you at such and such and that that happens all the time here. I'm thinking wow I'm really not. Never performing in front of a whole group of new people. I'd really like to do right. that. Yeah. So Sydney Fringe is coming up uh, September, I believe. Any plans oh, yeah. for? Oh yeah, I love Sydney. Yeah. Well, any uh, plans for Melbourne no, or Sydney? Not, no, not yet. Not, not at the moment. I've got a few other. Sh- I've got. I'm, I'm in a few other people's shows and doing other things at the moment. So that's kind of taking up most of my time. But um, I um, yeah. So I guess the, I guess that's a bit more of a long term plan to get to get out of here with my own stuff. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, well, we might yeah. um, we might have to talk when I see you in uh, September. Actually, um, yeah, so I'm coming absolutely. to to Adelaide, and and you will you will be uh, supporting the School of Hard Knock Knocks September nine to thirteen stand up comedy course with uh, Glenn Nicholas, and you'll be coming in on now. I think we've confirmed this the Monday the tenth for a bit yeah. of a meet and greet, meet the students. Yeah. And then, of course, you'll be headlining on the 13th, Thursday the 13th, with uh, Mad Dog Malcolm. Well, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, and I did meet some of the, some of your students uh, last night at the Cranker, actually, so it's good. We'll oh, you did? Excellent. There. Yeah, that would have yeah. been yeah. – uh, was that, was that uh, um, Steve Davis? Uh, yes, it was, yeah. Yep. I yeah. think he got up on stage, didn't he? Or, yeah. or was he just in the audience? Uh, he did get up, yeah, but I wasn't. Uh, I, I actually wasn't in the room at that point, but I did hear that he did get up, yeah. He did get up, yes. I know he's got, and I know he's got another gig uh, in September as well. So, yeah, he, he did our course in June, and so did Viet Boy and Kim Lee. You might know those two. Yeah. They're two Vietnamese uh, cousins, actually, and they did our course, and they've started doing uh, Cranker and also I think uh, I think both Viet and Kim have done uh, the Rhino Room in Adelaide, which would be, I guess, arguably the oh, yeah. the big yeah. the biggest room. Is that right in Adelaide? The Rhino Room. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Although the, the, the yes, yes, it is. The the oh, no, it's, it's great. The Cranker's a, a damn good one too. The um, it is, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, just as much as um, in as far as um, uh, having that classic. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Just that classic vibe of of, of you don't know what you're going to see and uh, anything mm. can happen and, and you can do what you want and yeah, it's really good. I really like it. It's a good. It's a good room. It's got great great lighting too. Great sound because I think it's also a band room, isn't it? So they've really fitted yeah, it, it is. Yeah, out yeah, with yeah. all the great yeah, audio. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, the audio is good in there, yeah. So 
if if someone uh, Jerry, if someone's heard this podcast and they've heard the opening gags of uh, Mad Dog Malcolm, and they're going, "Oh, this guy sounds good. I'd like to get him involved." Maybe they're not in Adelaide. Maybe they're in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth. They they want to get in contact with you. How do they get in contact with you? Yeah, so um, I th- I think my my details. Are, uh, Mad Dog Malcolm has a Facebook page. He doesn't have a website, unfortunately. But my my contact details are on there. Or Mad Dog Malcolm on YouTube. My contact mm-hmm. details should be there. But uh, otherwise, my, my presence on Facebook tends to have my phone number and my email address on it. So yeah, I'm not one. That, I'm not one to uh, to want to keep that private. So yeah. No worries at all. Well, that's yeah. how I, I guess I got in contact with you, didn't I? Apart from introducing myself after the yeah, show. Yeah, I think most of, the, most of the gigs I get, oh, sorry, most of the gigs I get from, from Mad Dog, like for um, little corporate things, is, uh, is through Facebook. So, yeah. yeah, I'm assuming I'm easy to find. I hope so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Well, we loved it. It's, it's very good. Well, character actors, character comedians, we don't have many of them in Australia. Well, I guess it, it, maybe it's a flashback to a time uh, gone. Hopefully it's something that I hope that you can inspire some of our comedians, some of our newbie comedians to to think about taking on a character because we had Elliot Goblet, Jack Levi, of course, is the, the man behind Elliot Goblet. We had him teach the Melbourne course and also get involved in our TV show, uh, Is This Thing On? Oh, great. And, yeah, and, and his, one of his bugbears has been, yeah, there isn't a lot of uh, character comedians out there anymore. There are, um, yeah, it's all about yourself. It's all about truth and talking about pains and uh, troubles that you've been through, but not necessarily uh, a yeah, character well, that, that is as whole as, as Mad Dog Malcolm. Yeah, but that, that truth and that pain is exactly what was always there in the, in the, in the character comedian. So that's why we are related. That's what, I mean, that's what... Good comedy years. Uh, I, I had this uh, discussion with someone a while ago who uh, who suggested that uh, you have to be yourself now, and I thought, well, at least a character isn't lying about being themselves because no yep. one's being themselves. <laughs> so at least if you're a character, you're being honest about. It. I mean, a character is actually more honest because it's like oh. I'm I'm being a character, and that's that, that's the truth I'm telling you. Well, the other person is like. I'm trying to fool you into thinking that this is who I am, and it just it it couldn't be. Yeah, I, I find that too. Uh, yeah, mm, but but true. anyway, that's uh, yeah. It's funny because Australia had um, almost exclusive character comedians for such a long time. We did, it's, it's, absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah, that is true. Yeah. Well, that's and, great. Uh, yeah, and even like you know things like the Divinals and ACDC and all that sort of stuff. We we we've got a we've got characters are in our DNA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, that's right. You're talking about Angus Young with a schoolboy outfit. Yeah, jump. Yeah, that kind yeah. of character. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, we tend to we tend to respond well to to characters here. I don't. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. And puppets. Um, we give people. Uh, sorry, I just went on a tangent there, but uh, you know, Aussie Ostrich, and then more recently, Randy uh, felt face. So anyway, just. Okay. Yeah, but we like we like our puppets in comedy as well. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, funny. I'll have to get someone. Yeah, we'll have to talk puppets. We'll get uh, Randy on uh, for a future interview. Well, Jerry, it's been it's been a privilege to talk to you um, and learn a bit more about Malcolm Mad Dog Malcolm Ma- Mad Dog Malcolm Cummings and uh, and and learn about how he was formed, how he was created. I'm looking forward to to meeting his character, the character. Um, in September, and again, reminder to anyone who's listening to this: if you're in if you're in Adelaide, or if you want to fly to Adelaide and and do the course with Glenn Nicholas and uh, Jerry Massey, it is September nine to thirteen. Yep. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for spending the time with me this afternoon. And yeah, uh, thank you, Mario. I look forward to September. It'd be great. See you, mate. Bye. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mario. 